Hi everyone, this is Scott up here at NCAR, and this is a video, uh, kind of an announcement for the newest version of Vapor that we are releasing today. It's version 3.4, and it's only been three months since we released version 3.3, which 3.3 um, is what we consider to be Vapor 3's first feature complete version. It had everything that Vapor 2 had, but better. And after releasing 3.3, we wanted to take a step back and address some of the usability problems that we felt existed in the user interface and some other uh, settings that you can access with Vapor. So this video will uh, be a cursory glimpse over those uh, usability changes uh, that we've introduced. So with that said, let me break out version 3.3. And as always, I'll put the uh, download link below the video. Um, as well as links to our GitHub repository and whatnot, as well as timestamps for um, specific features if you'd like to see those. So now that I've closed out of my presentation, I already have Vapor 3.4 running up in the background and you can see I have a big transparent visualizer screen because I haven't loaded data yet. So the first thing I do as always is I go to my file menu and import. Um, I'll do some trusty uh, WRF uh, Katrina data. I'll just import one individual WORF file, and there we have my domain. Um, just give it a little bit of a better angle with a left mouse click. And the, I guess one of the first uh, interesting new features in Vapor 3.4 is that we have a better algorithm for setting our random seed bias. Um, and so what that means is there's, there's many different ways you can inject seeds into a flow renderer. You, with the flow renderer, you can have a grid of seeds, like say you want a, a 10 by 10 distribution of seeds on the X, Y plane, you can do it in a grid. You can randomly scatter uh, seeds throughout your domain. And you can uh, also import a uh, text file that specifies where the seeds are. But there's also a random with bias option where you can distribute your seeds according to a, another variable. And so I'll demonstrate that right now by clicking on new. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a volume renderer to uh, display the variable that I'm targeting for my seed bias. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick uh, w. This is again Hurricane Katrina. So w being the vertical component of the wind vector. And then I will turn it on. There's my big blue brick. And so I'll go over the transfer function and I will situate my histogram so that the peak of the witch hat is right on the white. And then what I will do is I will drop down my opacity. I'm, I'm going to highlight only the very high values of W. And so you can see there's these, uh, these towers of like uplifting uh, air uh, kind of around the eye of the hurricane. If I, if I mask fewer values, I can, if I drag this point over, you can kind of see the, the eye wall is a little more uh, shown right there. But since I'm really only interested in the high values of W, I only want to put seeds where these very high values are. I'm just going to uh, mask everything else out in the witch hat and then gradually ramp up opacity as I get to the, the highest extreme of W. So now we see these, these towers of uh, high magnitude uh, vertical wind. I'm going to create a new flow render by clicking the new button, double click on flow. And then I'll go to my variables tab. We see the default variables U, V, and W for uh, how we are advecting our streamlines. We'll be using those three components of the wind. And now I'll go over to my seeding tab. And so up here at the top, uh, you can see we're using streamlines. So these are um, not varying with time. These are just following the vector field at a single time step, uh, good enough for demonstration purposes. And below the flow integration settings, I have my seed distribution settings. And by default, we're looking at a grid. So if I turn this on right now, we should be looking at a five by five grid of seeds um, by one on the Z plane. So they're kind of all stuck in the middle right there. Um, this uh, new usability enhancement, uh, again, regards random with bias. So I'm going to, instead of doing gridded, I'm going to do random with bias. I then will select my bias variable. And again, uh, I'm picking W. And then the bias weight is zero by default, which means that there is no bias. Um, we can apply a negative bias where our seeds will be avoiding these high values of W, or we can give it a high bias. Uh, so if I crank this up to 100, what we should see is the seeds randomly distributed, but with bias towards where there are high values of W. And so there we go. Our algorithm uh, has been improved so that all of the seeds will be distributed where these high values of W are. So 
uh, that's one of the big usability features. Another one um, is about, well, if, if you notice up here at the top, previously, and I have Vapor 2 open, I can probably, let me see. Yeah, so here, I'm sorry, this is Vapor version 3.3. .3. And so I have this open so I can show you guys a comparison between what 3.4 looks like uh, and what you might have previously been using in version 3.3. .3. So with Vapor 3.3, .3, I'm going to go ahead and import another Katrina file so we can uh, do an easy comparison. But actually, one of the one of the things that I need to mention. Yes, I will allow Vapor to access my folder. But before I do that, um, Vapor 3.3 had these three tabs, renderers, and I know it's hard to see, but this is the renderers tab, there's a navigation tab, and then there's a settings tab. Settings was inaccessible until you loaded data. And so what we did is we pulled out the settings tab and we applied a preferences menu. So now if you wanna to go to the application settings for Vapor, um, in Vapor 3.4, you'll just click on the Vapor menu on OS X, and I believe on CentOS, Windows, and Ubuntu, it's going to be in the File menu, but OS X likes to put it over in the uh, this is dedicated Vapor menu. So um, without loading data, you'll now be able to access a Preferences menu, which is this modal dialog that I'll just drop right down. And it's a little bit cleaner than what we had before, where we had, you know, Kind of a series of nested tabs and so we're trying to simplify that um, with by doing uh, the preferences menu among a few other things but if i go ahead and import data again i'll go to katrina pick my war file and now um, in vapor 3.3 this is how you would do that previously it was inaccessible before but now you can just get to it um, through the vapor menu um, Another thing you'll notice is that we've changed the name of one of these tabs. We've eliminated the settings tab. That's now the preferences menu. The navigation tab has been changed uh, to something that we call the scene menu. And um, navigation was originally picked as a name because it was kind of like a kind of like a, like a compass or a legend. Um, you could add different annotations that would give you an orientation, um, but that felt kind of ambiguous. And so we changed uh, the navigation tab into the scene tab. Um, another uh, new feature, we've um, refactored the color bar. So if I go to my renderers tab again, I'll turn off flow. Um, all of our renderers have a new color bar implementation. And so if I click on my volume renderer and go to the annotation tab, um, I can enable a color bar, which is more precise. Our, our previous one was a little bit off uh, regarding its tick marks. and um, there's uh, this new feature where you can pick like a few standard locations for where you might want your color bar, but you can also adjust where it is um, interactively uh, with these sliders and you know do things like change the height, um, the full scale number of ticks, and um, give it a title, foo, and that should show up at the top, and enable scientific notation if you like, and then also adjust the uh, significant figures. So um, yeah, new color bar, cool stuff. Additionally, let's see, what else do we have? Oh, here's um, one of my favorites. I'm gonna disable my color bar. So previously in Vapor 3.3, um, there were really, I mean, there still are really two ways to adjust where you're rendering in the scene. So I'm gonna make a volume renderer and previously um, what we would do if we wanted to like just do a volume rendering of the center, so let me let me pick W again. And I know I'm going a little fast, but let's see. Just trying to conserve time. I'm going to put my witch hat right at the white region of my color map. Drag this down. And okay, good enough. Um, so previously, if I only wanted to render the data at the very uh, center of the hurricane, what I would do is I would go to the geometry tab and manually edit the region like this. Actually, let me go back to appearance and crank this back up. That, that can show us where we're rendering a little bit more clearly. And then I could constrain, you know, on X, Y, and Z using these uh, sliders. Alternatively, I could go to this drop down menu, click on region, and that would give me interactive handlebars that I could slide. Um, we felt that this combo box up here, this region navigate mode, um, 
it, it didn't really have a good uh, flow to the use of the application. So what we're doing now is um, if I go to appearance and I'm gonna show all my data values, I'm not gonna mask anything out for this. So there's all my data values. That red manipulator box um, will automatically appear if you just click on the geometry tab. So whenever you're in geometry mode, you will be able to uh, edit the region you're drawing to with the sliders or with these uh, handlebars. We've removed the drop down, this drop down up here uh, that we saw previously in Vapor 3.2. So I don't know, a little bit cleaner up top um, in the user interface. Um, another thing um, you might have noticed is in this uh, renderer table, we've removed the type field and um, added new resizing um, uh, parameters. So that's easier for us to see what data set uh, associates with, with what renderer. If we look at 3.3, um, you could look at the tooltip by hovering over it, but um, the name and the type were most of the time identical, so that was redundant. We removed the type, and now um, you can see the uh, data set more clearly that way. Um, those are the major usability uh, features that have been added. There's there's a lot more, but they're kind of invisible features, so I'm not going to go into those. There is a couple of um, other features that we've added. They kind of fall into like the bug or enhancement category. Um, one of the enhancements that isn't part of the GUI, which but it is part of our um, development process, is that we've introduced um, a linter to our code base called Clang Tidy. So if anyone, if any of you guys ever feel like contributing to Vapor, one of the things you're gonna to have to do is install Clang Tidy version 11, at least, um, if, if not higher. And then you're also going to need to um, apply a uh, what's called a pre-push git hook. So right here, if I blow this up a little bit, I'm looking at, um, this is my development uh, directory on my, on my MacBook. And um, if you if you do a git clone to um, to copy our repository, you'll get you know this this uh, vapor in all caps. What you'll need to do after installing Clang Tidy is go into the share directory and then the git hooks directory, and then there will be two files here. One is the pre push hook, and one is a script called setup hooks. What you'll need to do is do setuphooks.sh, and that's going to install the pre-push hook into Vapor's uh, git directory, this, this hidden git directory. And what that's going to do is it's going to run our, um, our settings for Clang Tidy on your push so that um, we, we make sure, so that we know that uh, your, your formatting and your style is adherent to, to our style guide. If you don't do that, then what's going to happen is when you go to GitHub to uh, create your pull request, if I go to our pull request, currently we have five, um, we're going to run our uh, continuous integration tests on your um, on your pull request. And it, it's not going to pass the check for uh, formatting. So if I go to this one, if I click on this X, we can see two of three checks are OK. Here they are. Looks like this one's failing. It's built on Ubuntu 18. It is building on CentOS 7, and it is passing the Clang format test. So that's one of the checks that we're going to employ on any incoming pull requests, just to keep our style and our standards uh, consistent. Um, one final thing that um, we've managed to change um, with with this. Whoa! Did I just lose my mic? Well, I'll just finish up in case I. I'm still on. Um, we have re-employed uh, our weekly builds. So if I go to Vapor's main repository and go to my releases, I can see uh, our weekly builds are back up and running. Uh, they broke back in January, but now we have working weekly builds for Windows, um, uh, Ubuntu, CentOS. And so if there's a feature that you're waiting for that you're trying to um, you know, get your hands on, the weekly builds are Reemployed, and that's going to be your best uh, shot at getting your hands on a feature that's not in a published release. Um, the last thing I want to 
say before signing off is um, if any of you guys attended the tutorial that we held in March, I just want to say uh, thank you for that. And I plan on doing another tutorial, uh, maybe in another month and a half, where it's more, it's going to be more of a deep dive into the flow renderer, probably our most complicated renderer. And so I think that that one in particular deserves some more attention. And um, again, it'll be interactive. So if you have questions, you know, I can stop and, you know, answer and, you know, help you out with your data if you actually have it open uh, during the presentation. So um, I'll leave it at that. Uh, I'll put download links to Vapor 3.4 at the bottom. And please, um, more feedback is, is great for us. If you guys have any feature requests or questions, um, hit us up at our forum. I'll post the link uh, at the bottom as well. And um, yeah, that's about it. So uh, thanks and have a nice day.